Hello everyone and uh, it's the Olympic Games of course I'm out on the playing fields and I'm working on my sport for the 2032 Brisbane Olympics. It's always important to look ahead. It's all very well that there's Olympic Games in Tokyo today. Well done to everyone competing. Um, Clifford Bennett, Chief Economist, ACY Securities and I guess I have to talk to you today about the through the roof inflation number recorded in Australia this morning. Uh, came out at more than triple the, three, the previous month's 1.1%, coming out at uh, a whopping 3.8%. Uh, and everyone's sort of saying that's okay because it's temporary. I mean, what are they thinking about? Yes, uh, there was a falling away of free childcare. Yes, fuel prices have gone up, but that's going to be sustained these higher fuel prices. I'm calling a top in oil in the futures market, but that doesn't mean it's going to be going down at the pump in any big way or fashion. Uh, so inflationary pressures from higher energy prices uh, are going to be sustained. Uh, inflation pressures from supply chain disruptions uh, may actually grow. Inflation pressures from the freedom of pricing power that now exists in the world is self-evident in the earnings results of the big three tech companies in the US and will also be the case for some Australian companies, obviously. Uh, meanwhile, the hardship sort of quota goes through the roof with the lockdown. Well, basically, the goalposts, where are they? The goalposts, they keep moving. That's why I'm not sure where they are. Um, and that's not very cricket, some people might say, um, of the government. But they're doing their best and it doesn't matter whether we agree or we disagree this is how we have to cope in the Sydney region anyway at the moment fortunately Victoria and South Australia are out of lockdown um, but all I can say to you is if you are in lockdown in Sydney and many of our clients are uh, you have to choose to be happy regardless and that sounds flippant but it actually isn't it's actually very very deep you have to choose to be happy uh, a lot of people throughout history have dealt with very challenging situations by doing just that. In other words, okay, it's like this, but I'm going to be happy anyway. So I wish you well in that process. Uh, in terms of economic impact, of course, it's very nice South Australia, Victoria are out of lockdown, but not fully. I mean, mask wearing, hospitality, retail will still suffer some decline based on it's just as not much fun it's just not as much fun as it used to be uh, to go and sit in a cafe or a restaurant with massive spacing wearing a mask um, of course you're allowed to take it off to eat i tried drinking my coffee through the mask it doesn't work don't try that at home uh, inflation pressures are here to stay hardship on the australian economy is going to be prolonged as i said last week we've reached a tipping point unfortunately where a lot of the uh, impact of lockdown is actually going to be permanent in that some small businesses, even medium-sized businesses, may not be coming back, not certainly in the way that they were before. So we're already, or we already have long-term impact. Inflation is going to be sustained. And, and actually, where we, the inflation number that came out this morning for second quarter is around 2002 levels. And if we were to move to interest rates that were back then, we're looking at 5 to 7% interest rates from the central bank. Now, of course, we're not going to see that, but it gives you an idea of what the risk scenario, the direction of the risk is for interest rates from here moving forward. Again, a lot of the financial media headlines will today be saying it's transitory, don't worry about it. But that's really very much in the believe what you want to believe basket, not really in the real world basket and having to cope with the world as it is, whether we like it or not. Um, so I would suggest that Australian stocks are very toppish here. We saw interesting price action in US stocks in the last 24 hours. Certainly a little bit of a uh, sort of exhaustion phase. Various reasons being given for that, such as China cracking down on people not doing the right thing. I mean, all China's doing is making sure people do what the legislation they have says they have to do without going via the Cayman Islands, etc. So it's quite a reasonable step by China. Um, but people are using that as an excuse, but I think there's other factors at play. I think with all the earnings now out, I mean, basically if you wanted to buy on strong earnings for the tech companies, you've already done it, it's time to take profits. I think that is the key for why the tech sector, the NASDAQ, not sure of the wind here, why the, uh, we'll try this, sorry everyone, but it can make a difference. 
um, why the NASDAQ was off 1.2%. Um, that combined with the extension of the lockdown in New South Wales and the ongoing re and the high inflation number for Australia as a whole and the ongoing realisation, yes, it's going to be great having stimulus going forward, but it may not be as effective as it was in the past and that people are growing weary, really. So all of that put together, I'm not sure it's a good day to be long Australian stocks. I continue to not be happy about being long the Australian dollar, though it is volatile and sideways on the day because it is juggling. I will juggle for you on the next show, I promise, so look forward to that one. Uh, the Australian dollar is juggling between a sort of just the US dollar might have had a bit of finished its run. Remember, I called that US dollar strength. It just seems to be tiring a little bit. We might see a bounce in the euro and sterling. The Australian dollar is sort of torn between going with the euro and sterling or being stuck in this sort of lockdown, high inflationary supply chain disruption on the other side of the world without any without global travel coming back to normal probably until 2023 now if you look at the global uh, new cases of COVID. Uh, so it's not a great outlook for the Australian dollar. There's still a lot of hedge funds in the United States caught long. They shouldn't have been long. They should have been listening to ACY securities, but they weren't. So they're caught long and they still need to get out. That's why the Australian dollar is caught today in that battle. It could be that the Australian dollar mount, does mount some sort of recovery to go with your own sterling for a day or two or three. Uh, but I think the dominant risk is still lower for the Australian dollar. I still like sterling Aussie. Called that very early on and it's streaking ahead and continues to look very good. Uh, US stocks in general, I'd be very careful about them continuing to sort of fall away a little bit here. They will try to bounce first thing in New York, I would think. But after that, they could have another under pressure day. Remains to be seen. One day doesn't leave for the next. The little puppy dog's just wandered in. He's too small to get in the camera. <laughs> um, so overall, I think just, you know, be very active because there's a lot of opportunity in the markets at the moment because a lot of people are misreading things like those New York hedge funds. So um, <laughs> I am still bearish the Australian dollar. If it bounces, it's probably an opportunity to sell. I am still bearish the Australian stock market, despite it breaking the top of the range, testing previous highs, but not able to go on with it. That kind of scary price action in and of itself. So the central themes remain, remain the same. A little bit bullish gold, bearish the Australian dollar overall, not necessarily on the day or the next two days, but if it does slip from here, it'll accelerate. So watch for that. That's a real risk in the market at the moment. Still think oil is topped out long term and the bounce might have completed itself. Um, I think I've covered all the bases, except don't forget, you have to think about what sport you're going to be playing in the 2032 Olympics in Brisbane. Clifford Bennett, Chief Economist, ACY Securities.